management and administration in this unit we are going to cover sections 88 to 91 and also section 95 we are going to cover annual return from 92 to section 94 meetings discussed under section 96 to 102 and also section 121 then we have requisites of calling a meeting that is section 103 to 120 which will cover the provisions of quorum proxy and you will also study types of registers basically this chapter contains information provisions relating to uh, conducting of meetings various registers to be maintained and what are the requirements for conducting a valid meeting first let us discuss the types of registers to be maintained by the company every company will maintain a register of members whether they stay in india or outside india and this will be men maintained under mgt1 what are the details that you will men mention in the register of members? So it contains information of each class of equity and preference shares held by them either staying in India or outside India. We have to show it separately in the register. Details such as the name, address, occupation of the uh, uh, member, number of shares held by him, number of shares transferred by him, transmission, the date of transfer, uh, the price, the face value at which he had purchased the shares, the date on which he became a member, the date on which he ceased to be a member, all the details relating to a member will be mentioned in the register. You can also maintain a foreign register if it is authorized by your articles. So foreign register can be maintained, but within 30 days, you have to inform, sorry, within 30 days, of maintaining the register you have to inform the roc that you are maintaining the register in form mgt3 so you have to give a notice to the roc uh, giving him the place uh, where the register of foreign members is situated and that foreign register that notice will be given to the roc specifying the place where the foreign register is situated and that notice will be given in form mgt3 the register of members, if you are not maintaining a foreign one, the register will be maintained either will be maintained at the registered office. You can also keep it at some other place if you find it more convenient for better administration. Saying that no, it is uh, better that we keep it at some other place because the registered office is congested or it is it is too small uh, or maybe the other place is benef it, it is strategically located. So that is not a problem. You can keep it at any other place within the same city, town, village where the registered office is situated. Or you can also keep it at some other place other than the city, town, village where the registered office is situated. But more than one tenth of the total registered members reside. This limit is important for case based question. I repeat, you can keep it at the registered office. You can also keep it at some other place, but within the same city, town, village where the registered office is situated. You don't want to keep it in the same city. You want to keep it in some other place other than the city, town, village where the registered office is situated. Then you can do so if one tenth of the members who are entered in the register, they reside. We will have to maintain a register of debenture holders and other security holders. This will be maintained in form MGT. Okay, so the format, the details which are to be filled is given in form MGT2. Where will you keep the registers and the annual return? Registers, annual return, they will all be kept at the registered office of the company. This is the place where the books are maintained, communication takes place. Can they be kept at any other place? Yes. If more than one-tenth of the total members entered in the registers reside, you have to pass a special resolution in the general meeting. So we have mentioned that point earlier also by passing a special resolution you can keep it at a place where one tenth of the total members entered in the register reside again this is important for case based question one very important provision section 92 very frequently asked in the exam there were attempts wherein question was asked in every three consecutive attempts i have seen every three consecutive okay so they have asked in one particular time next attempt again then third attempt again they have asked and in one particular time they have they have asked two questions on section 92 so you have to memorize the provisions section 92 annual return this is just a compliance requirement it's just a compliance you have to file a form that is form 7 which contains financial as well as non-financial information when is it to be filed the annual return will be filed with the ROC within 60 days from the date on which the annual general meeting is held. So it is a compliance requirement that once you have hold the annual general meeting within 60 days, you have to uh, uh, file an annual return of the company. Penalties are imposed if you don't file the annual return. 
when AGM is held, you have to file within 60 days. But what if the AGM is not held in that particular year? Then law says you need to still file the annual return within 60 days from the date on which the AGM should have been held. Okay. Normally, the annual general meeting is to be held within six months from the closure of the financial year. I'm talking about the subsequent meeting. So the last day for holding the annual general meeting is ideally 30th September of every year. But then there are so many other criteria which you need to satisfy. The gap should not be more than 15 months and it should be held in every year. So six months, within six months from the end of the financial year, you should have actually held it. But what is the last day on which you should hold the meeting from there? Within 60 days, you have to file the annual return and also state the reasons for not holding the annual general meeting. Also mention why you were not able to hold the annual general meeting. All right. So can this be asked in the exam? Yes, mostly for MCQ. All right, this can be asked for MCQ. What is mentioned in the annual return? As I as I already informed students, this is just a compliance requirement. It contains both financial as well as non-financial data. Companies registered office, where is it situated? What is the principal business activity? What is the main source of activity? What is the uh, details of holding subsidiary associate companies, details of shares, debentures and other securities and also the shareholding pattern, the promoter group, non-promoter group. The members, debenture holders, promoters, directors, key managerial personnel, meeting of members, the class, board and other various meetings. So when was the meeting uh, conducted? What was the date of the meeting? How many people attended the meeting? What was the attendance? When was the meeting held? Number of meetings that were held. Remuneration of directors, key managerial person, personnel. In case of a private company, aggregate amount of remuneration drawn by the directors. So some financial information, some, some non-financial information is mentioned in the annual return. In case a penalty or a punishment is imposed on the company, directors, officers, then details of uh, and the details of compoundable offenses, appeals, matters relating to certification, compliances, disclosure. So these are the things which you should remember if a, if a question is asked on the contents of annual return. So basically you are trying to inform the ROC that see uh, it, during the year these were my shareholders, debenture holders, other security holders. These were the dates when I conducted the meeting. So many members attended the meeting. Was there any uh, penalty imposed on the meeting? When was the uh, what is the remuneration of the director? So that is information which you are giving to the ROC. Signing, yes, can be asked as a separate question. So you need to know the provisions of signing of the annual return. In case of one person company, small company, private company, if it is a startup, then it can be signed by the company secretary or where there is no company secretary appointed, it will be signed by the director of the company company secretary is generally to be compulsorily appointed when the paid up capital is 10 crores or more that time you need to appoint a whole time company secretary but here if you're not eligible to appoint a company secretary you can do it so voluntarily but if if it is not then a director can sign the annual return in case of other companies director and company secretary and if suppose you're not meeting the criteria you don't have a company secretary then buy a company secretary in practice so in this case if you have a company secretary director and company secretary if you don't have appointed if you if you have not appointed a company secretary then director and company secretary in practice okay are you getting me then by a director and company secretary in practice both will have to sign the annual return certification yes the limits are important for us in case of a listed company so listed company has to give a certificate of annual return or if you are a company having paid up capital of 10 crore or more or maybe turnover of 50 crore or more then the annual return is to be certified by a company secretary in practice what will he mention in the in the certificate he will certify that all the requirements have been properly filled and <clears throat> information which is given is correct true to the best of his knowledge so he will just give a give a declaration that whatever are the compliances for the annual return that have been properly complied with the information given is true and accurate to the best of his knowledge so that certificate will be filed with roc so what will the company do the company will file the annual return as well as the uh, certification then we have inspection Along with the register, we will maintain index of register. 
we will maintain other registers we will maintain books so who can inspect register indices annual return now what are indices it is a plural of index now why is an index maintained like in your textbook you have an index so that you can find the chapter easily similarly index is maintained so that you can find the the details of the members conveniently who can inspect now see the inspection can take place only during business hours which is generally 9 to 6 without the payment of fees it can be inspected by members debenture holders other security holders beneficial owners on payment of fees it can be inspected by any person other than these these persons can take extracts of the books uh, in uh, registers and indices if they want a copy if you want a photocopy then you will have to pay for it notice all right i want to call a meeting so law says that you need to give a notice of the meeting in the notice we will specify the resolutions that the company is going to pass along with other small details like when is the meeting what time is the meeting where is the meeting how to reach the place of destination what are the contents of the meeting what are we going to discuss in the meeting the resolutions to be passed and uh, also the explanatory statement will be, will be provided for special businesses so uh, so that the members they read the uh, they read the resolution they they uh, uh, come prepared whether they want to vote in favor or against the resolution now, let's say if i want to appoint mr ayer as a director so many people will be curious to know who is mr ayer what are the different companies in which he is a director what is the remuneration that you are going to give him is he uh, uh, suitable for our company what is his work experience which are the other companies in which he is a director so i would like to know everything about that person if all this is di discussed in the meeting itself it will be so time consuming so law says it is better that you give them an explanatory statement and that will be sent along with a notice in that explanatory statement you will provide all the relevant details which are necessary for them to come to one conclusion whether they want to vote in favor or against that resolution so notice will be served to every member it will be given to equity as well as preference shareholders preference shareholders are entitled to receive the meeting they can even attend the meeting but they can vote only on resolutions which concern them as preference shareholders they cannot vote on every resolution unless of course the dividend has not been paid for two or more years it will be given to every director auditor of the company legal representative of the deceased um, assignee of insolvent member they will attend the meeting but they will vote only in the capacity of either a legal representative or an assignee for when should you give the notice notice should be given at least 21 days before the meeting we want people who stay in far away places to make arrangements to come at the place of the meeting so losses you should give them at least 21 but clear days clear means complete days full and complete days okay so we should we should give them full complete days for uh, 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 making arrangements to come to the place of the meeting we should for calculating 21 days uh, exclude something i'll explain first the example and then i'll read the theory with you so we need to give them 21 clear days of notice so if i want to give them 21 clear days of notice how many days before the meeting should i dispatch my notice if i want 21 clear days so i will write 21 days okay then if i am sending it by post i will also have to consider two days of posting Okay, I will consider two days of posting. Then the day on which the meeting is held, so date of meeting that will be excluded. Why? Because that is not a full day. Okay, that you can't tell that I am including the date of the meeting also. No, that will be excluded. Plus the date on which the notice is date of service of notice. Date on which notice is served. Like you receive the notice at three p.m. because your postman comes at three o'clock. so that day we will not consider half a day is gone so if i consider all this one day one day i need to dispatch the notice at least 25 days before the meeting okay only when it is dispatched 25 days before the meeting i will get 21 clear days of notice for the members so you need to ensure that the notice is dispatched at least 25 days before the meeting so we will exclude the day on which the notice is served we will exclude the date of the meeting and uh, we will include two days of 
posting so considering all this we will have to send the notice at least 21 days 25 days before the meeting okay what if i want to send a shorter notice i want to call a meeting by giving a shorter notice like uh, take, take the example of us of a section 8 company they have a privilege they can send only 14 days notice instead of 21 days notice but not other companies they don't have that privilege but law says that sometimes it is uh, not possible for you to send 21 days of notice so under certain circumstances you can but we don't want to encourage this why because otherwise the companies what they will do you know they don't want members to come they want limited people to attend the meeting they don't want many people to come and attend the meeting so they will send only seven days of notice they will send the notice seven days before the meeting they know that in such short span of time not everyone will be make will be able to make arrangements to come to the place of the meeting so the meeting will be conducted with just a few members we can easily influence them law says you are acting smart you want limited people to attend the meeting we will allow a shorter notice only when if it is an agm and you have the consent of at least 95 percent of the members entitled to vote in the meeting so out of 100 percent members if 95 who are voting at the meeting give their consent only then we will allow shorter notice now it is not possible for me to obtain the <laughs> obtain the consent of 95 members there are going to be members who will oppose this so it is good for us we don't want to allow you to call a meeting by giving a shorter notice so this is one very good way in case of other general meeting like extraordinary general meeting if the company is having share capital then the members holding holding 95 percent of such part of capital uh, of the company that gives them a right to vote only then they can vote at the meeting so if you have share capital then members holding 95 percent of the uh, share capital which gives them the right to vote only they can vote at the only then we will allow a shorter notice members having uh, if the company does not have share capital okay does not have share capital then in that case members holding 95 percent of the total voting power exercisable at the meeting only if they give their consent we will allow a shorter notice students i can't do anything you will have to memorize these provisions 95 percent is constant only wordings change you can write 95 percent of the members holding the total voting power only the, because there are no shares so 95 percent of the total voting power only then we can allow shorter notice then we have different kinds of meeting you have annual general meeting section 96 97 and 99 now you must be wondering where is section 98 in case the AG, egm is called at the request of the tribunal okay so if the tribunal calls a meeting then that is covered under section 98 okay so now we found section 98 okay as the name suggests annual it means this is the meeting which is held once in every calendar year it is not financial year it is calendar year calendar year means once between jan to december all right what is discussed in the annual general meeting why do we call it there are two businesses which we discuss in the annual general meeting one is the ordinary business and other is special business ordinary business means a business which is which is discussed in every annual general meeting of the company or you can also say that it is discussed in annual general meeting of any company these are the businesses which are generally discussed in the annual general meeting they are known as ordinary businesses we will consider the financial statements the board's report auditor's report appointment of directors declaration of dividend it is proposed by the board of directors in the board uh, board's report it is declared by the members in the annual general meeting appointment of auditors and fixing their remuneration this is ordinary business it is not the business which is ordinary or special it is the meeting which makes it ordinary or special so if i am appointing an audit uh, if i am appointing a director in the annual general meeting it's an ordinary business but the same director if appointed in any other meeting that will become special business any business other than the ordinary is considered as special business when should we hold the first annual general meeting the first annual general meeting should be held within nine months from the end of the financial year so if my financial year ends on 31st of march let's say 2020 then i must hold it within nine months that is 31st of december 2020 now uh, in case your company is incorporated let's say on 3rd august 
ओके कंपनी इज इनकॉर्पोरेटेड ऑन थर्ड ऑगस्ट ट्वेंटी वेन विल द फाइनेंशियल ईयर एंड फाइनेंशियल ईयर एंड ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ मार्च ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी लॉ से दैट यू नीड टू होल्ड द एनुअल फर्स्ट एनुअल जनरल मीटिंग विद इन नाइन मंथ फ्रॉम द एंड ऑफ द फाइनेंशियल ईयर सो आई नीड टू होल्ड द मीटिंग बिफोर थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ डिसम्बर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी और राइट नाउ इन द ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी आई हैव हेल्ड द एनुअल जनरल मीटिंग नाउ वी हैव डिस्कस द फर्स्ट सेंटेंस दैट मीटिंग मस्ट बी हेल्ड वंस इन एवरी कैलेंडर ईयर सो ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी इज कवर्ड okay we have covered 2020 this calendar year is covered but what about the calendar year 2019 company was incorporated na but is it possible can i hold the annual general meeting in 2019 what will i discuss the accounts are not yet finalized so law says let's drop this if you hold the annual general meeting before 31st of december then it is okay if you don't hold the the if, if you don't hold any annual general meeting in the year of incorporation what about subsequent annual general meeting it will be held within 6 months from the end of the financial year so if the financial year ends on 31st march 2020 then i must let's take 2021 now then the meeting must be held within 6 months it means the meeting must be held by 30th of september 2021 you should also ensure that the meeting is held in every calendar year and the gap between two agm should not be more than 15 months these three are cumulative requirements means all the three have to be complied with what if the gap is going more than 15 months then you should hold the annual general meeting before that extension of 3 months may be granted by roc for subsequent annual general meeting so if i go to the roc for genuine reason he may extend 3 months and then i can hold the meeting by 31st december 2021 no extension is given for first annual general meeting because they already have 9 months for holding the meeting okay we already have an extended time limit where should you hold the annual general meeting what is the day time date of holding the agm every agm should be called during business hours so what is the time it should be held between 9 to 6 this is the business hours yes on which day it should be held on a day that is not a national holiday now national holiday will include 15th august that is the independence day 26 january republic day and 2nd october gandhi jayanti apart from these three days you can hold agm on any day you can even hold it on sunday where will it be held either at the registered office of the company or some other place within the same city town village where the registered office is situated okay you can hold the agm in any place but within the same city town village in which the registered office is situated over here you can write down that annual general meeting of okay agm of an unlisted company can be held anywhere in india provided the consent of the members is obtained either in writing or through electronic mode okay provided that we obtain the consent of members either in writing or electronic mode in advance and in that case you can hold it anywhere in india but only for an unlisted company then we have the extraordinary general meeting now i can't wait for the annual general meeting no meeting can be called any time during the year i want to take decision i need to call the meeting of members meeting which is called between two annual general meetings you can call it any time whenever need uh, whenever you require meeting held between two annual general meeting is known as extraordinary general meeting so this is a meeting which can be called at any time during the year any meeting called between two annual general meeting is known as extraordinary general meeting now egm may be called by the board of directors on their own they want to take decision you can call it any time like you want to shift the registered office from one place to another you need to pass a resolution call a meeting any time it may also be called on the requisition requisition means request it can be called on the requisition that is request of members members want to remove the managing director members want to take some decision board is not calling uh, the meeting on its own so the members can send a request now requisition means that you have to send a request if one member sends request the company is not going to call egm so we need the request from at least members holding 1/10 of the paid up capital or if you don't have paid if you don't have share capital then at least 1/10 of the total voting power now even in college 
if only one student requests the principal is not going to listen but if many of them give a request in writing then the principal will be forced to comply with your uh, comply with your requirement so you can request the company and then the board of directors will call an extraordinary general meeting but if the board fails then requisitionists can themselves call a meeting and when they conduct the meeting whatever expenses they incur for the meeting that they can claim reimbursement from the uh, company and the company will deduct that from the remuneration of directors i like that point if the directors are not calling the extraordinary general meeting on the request of members members can themselves hold the meeting and recover the cost from the company company will deduct that from the remuneration of directors it's a good point the tribunal yes either on its own or on request of members that see the company is not calling the meeting and we can't call it so the tribunal will ask the company to call an extraordinary meeting and in case the order is received by the tribunal the company will have to call the meeting what is the period of calling and holding the meeting as soon as we receive the request the notice from the requisition is the board will call a meeting by giving 21 days notice and they will actually hold the meeting within 45 days of receiving notice from members okay as soon as the company receives the notice from the requisitionist within 21 days they will call the board meeting and they will hold the board meeting within 45 days so within 21 days you need to call and within 45 days of the notice you need to actually hold the meeting in case they fail then the requisitionist can call the meeting within three months from the depositing of requisition see even they have an option no to call okay arrow yes this way requisitionists can themselves call the meeting but uh, they can call it within three months from the date of deposit of the requisition so as soon as the notice is given to the board they should call it within 21 days and hold the meeting within 45 days if they fail then we give them another uh, 45 days to the members to actually conduct the meeting so 45 plus 45 90 days that is three months I'm just giving you an approximate calculation. That much time is given for the requisitionist to hold. If they don't want to do it, they can go to the tribunal and the tribunal will call an extraordinary general meeting. Whatever is the decision taken, it is done by voting. Now, there are different methods of voting. I'm not, I will not be able to discuss everything over here in detail. For details, you can refer my textbook. Now, voting by show of hands. There are different methods of voting. Voting by show of hand is the easiest one. So members will be assembled. The chairman will conduct the voting by show of hands. Members who want to vote in favor will raise their hand. Then the chairman, he will not go to count each and every members, but just by sight, he will see if majority of them are voting. Then in that case, yes, the voting will be considered as done. Member need uh, chairman. His decision is final. If he says, I have conducted voting by show of hand, it is done. We are not going to ask him how many members voted in favor and how many voted against the resolution. But voting by show of hand is a very crude and it's a very basic method. It will be conducted unless the member asks for the voting to be conducted by poll. Unless we don't receive any particular request, generally the meetings uh, conduct voting by show of hands. If the member re requires, they can also get the voting conducted by poll. What happens in that? A polling paper is given to the members who are present in the meeting. They will write whether they want to vote in favor or against the resolution. A box will be kept. They will keep the polling paper in the box. A scrutinizer will open the box, count the votes and decide whether the resolution is passed or not. He will maintain a report and uh, the papers will be kept with him. Once he's done with the counting, once the report is prepared, he will handle the post polling papers to the company. But who has the time to go and attend the meeting personally? Then in that case, we have given them an option of electronic voting. In case of electronic voting, the notice will specify that we are giving you an option of electronic voting. Read the instructions in the notice itself. Log into the website URL is already given over there. Log in there with your DPID client ID. A page will open. You have to just click whether you want to vote in favor or against the resolution. Your vote will be cast. This vote will be kept locked. There are so many people who don't know how to operate that electronic medium. For them, along with the notice, we will also send a postal ballot. Now, what is a postal ballot? They send you a paper. It's like an envelope on the back side. On the front side, they will give you the resolution to be passed. You just have to tick whether you want to vote in favor or against the resolution. Fold the envelope. Put it in the post box. That is nothing your postal ballot. It will be sent to the scrutinizer. Scrutinizer will open the papers, see whether you have voted in favor or against the resolution. He will count and he will also unlock the votes that he has received through electronic mode. 
so both the votes will then be counted and you will decide whether the resolution has been passed or not there are steps there is a long procedure in my notes you will find that all the steps are covered in 10 steps only everything is covered in 10 steps whereas if you see the act if you see the module it's a it's a very lengthy procedure but i have given it in an answer form in my notes for the notes you can purchase it from my website theorymasterslearning.com next let us discuss something about minutes book now what are minutes meeting is over after a few days will you remember what was discussed in the meeting nobody can remember exactly what was discussed in the meeting that is why law requires to maintain a record of the proceedings of the meeting that record is known as the minutes book minutes because you are maintaining a record okay minute by minute it's not that you meant you write everything in the minutes book it's just that during the period of the meeting whatever was discussed that will be properly drafted and a book will be prepared we will write everything in a proper manner and that that is known as a minutes book loose sheets of paper do not constitute a book it's not a book exactly like what i have seen is that everything is maintained in the soft copy on the computer after uh, let's say six months or a year we take a print out and we properly bind it so i have seen books which are bound and they contain all the minutes most of them are in the soft copy and uh, yes uh, you can also get a printout and then bind into, into a book and then maintain the record for the entire year but it doesn't happen that you maintain a book for every meeting all right so minutes book section 118 is nothing but a record of the transactions of of whatever was discussed in the meeting the resolutions passed in the meeting this can be used for future reference it can be used as an evidence in the court of law proving that xyz resolutions were passed in the meeting the minutes book they will contain proceedings of the meeting and will be kept within 30 days from the conclusion of every such meeting concerned or passing of resolution by postal ballot in the books so as soon as the meeting is conducted resolutions are passed then after 30 days sorry within 30 days you need to properly prepare the minute that is generally done by the company secretary he is also a part of the meeting and uh, he makes a note in the meeting of whatever was going in the meeting then after that he will sit properly draft the minutes get it signed by the chairman of the meeting and then file the document in the minutes book the minutes book shall be consecutively numbered it means all the pages shall be serially numbered minutes of each meeting now each meeting means that you need to uh, prepare minutes of every meeting like the board meeting committee meeting then you have annual general meeting extraordinary meeting class meeting minutes will be prepared for every meeting containing fair and correct summary okay containing fair and correct summary of the proceedings that took place at the concerned meeting correct and fair it means that whatever was important was discussed in the meeting everything is maintained in the minutes book all the appointments made like you are appointing the director the auditor shall be included in the minutes of the meeting so resolutions which are passed for appointment will be included this is very important for exam other points were like fairly important but this is very important for exam minutes shall be signed by the board of directors will sign the minutes for the board meeting uh, sorry for, um, for the meeting board meeting okay just changing the pen color mm, for the board meeting or committee meeting it will be signed by the chairman of the same or next succeeding meeting now why are we allowing the chairman of the next succeeding meeting to sign it see in case of a board meeting chairman will sign now, who is a chairman now chairman or chairperson you can say that also chairperson is a person who presides over the meeting okay uh, he is very different from the chairman of the company chairman of the company is someone who is the senior most not by age but someone who owns a lot of shares of the company so chairman of the meeting is different from chairman of the company your chairman of the company is someone who presides over the meeting he ensures that the decorum of the meeting is maintained so chairman he will sign the minutes and if the chairman is not available maybe he died or maybe he is out of india currently he is not available then chairman of the next succeeding meeting can can sign because board meeting needs to be held once in every three months once in every quarter so if the board if the minutes could not be signed in this meeting it can be signed by the chairman of the next meeting because anyways we are going to meet but what if you have conducted a general meeting like an extraordinary general meeting or an annual general meeting now extraordinary general meeting is conducted as and when required 
you don't know when you are going to meet for the next uh, extraordinary meeting i know general meeting is held just once in a year now you cannot wait for a year or you cannot wait for the next meeting for the minutes to be signed in that case chairman of the same meeting will sign preferably within 30 days of meeting or if the chairman is unavailable due to any reason like death or maybe he is away uh, he is not in india it may be signed by a director duly authorized by the board because we cannot wait for the next annual general meeting. We cannot wait for the next extraordinary meeting because we don't know when the next EGM will be held. Students, this is important for exam because case-based questions can be asked on this. If a theory question is asked on the minutes, then you can write the entire part that you see on the screen. But mostly questions, uh, case-based questions are asked on this. Minutes will be kept in accordance with the provisions. They will serve as an evidence in the court in the proceedings therein. All right. Now, this is also important because again, case-based questions are asked on this part. So, two things are uh, important from the minutes part. Any of the following matter shall not be included. Okay, I'm highlighting the word not. It, not, it will not be included in the minutes if. In which the opinion of the chairman. Now, what is the story behind this? We discussed that minutes book should contain true and fair summary. It should see i have written over here it should contain fair and correct summary true summary of whatever what was transacted in the meeting now we had called a meeting to remove the managing director of the company in that case you need not specify the various reasons or the dialogues that were taken let's say he was accused of uh, uh, miss he was accused of um, inappropriate behavior with a female employee now, you need not write what discussions took place in the meeting. You need not write the exact dialogues that were shared in the meeting. But the shareholders insisted that no, everything that was discussed in the meeting should be, should be mentioned there because it should contain true and correct summary, fair summary of whatever was discussed in the meeting. <coughs> Sorry. But the chairman will have absolute discretion in whatever is whatever is to be written in the minutes book chairman will decide what should be included and what should not be included in the minutes and his decision will be final so if the chairman feels that it may be defamatory of any person defamatory means it affects the goodwill the reputation of the person against whom that statement is made if he feels that no it's quite derogatory it is, it is unfair on that uh, person's goodwill or personality. Then if he considers it as defamatory, he may disallow the information from being published. It is irrelevant. It is immaterial to the proceeding. He says that we need not write all this. Just write the important parts. It is detrimental to the interest of the company. Sometimes the chair, the, the board of directors, they were on, a, they had a very heated argument. There was a lot of disagreement. There was a lot of negativity in the board meeting. You need not write that. What will the others who refer that minute saying that the board of directors, they are not agreeing on a thing and this is this what they actually discussed in the meeting? It will, it will be detrimental to the interest of the company. Sometimes in the board of the company, there are two groups and there is a lot of media attention also. We don't want that anything should harm the interest or the image of the company. So the chairman may disallow all that from being written in the minutes the matter to be included or excluded this is very important so i'm highlighting that in red the matters to be included or excluded shall be at the absolute discretion of the chairman of the meeting members cannot insist that that the the following matter should be included in the minutes whatever should be included or excluded depends on the chairman all right students so this is an important part for exam generally a case based question is asked but in that you will have to write the entire theory points which you can see on the screen Okay, so proxy section 105, yes, can be asked as a theory or a case-based question. Now, who is a proxy? It has the same meaning which you know in college. You are not attending the lecture, so you ask your friend to attend. That person who is attending the lecture for you is your proxy. So proxy means member is not able to attend the meeting. So member authorizes a person to attend the meeting. Now, how will it how will the company know who is authorized? So the company uh, sends a form or a proxy form which the member will fill, submit it to the company, informing the company the person who is going to come and attend the meeting. The form as well as the person is known as proxy. So let us go through the provisions of proxy. Proxy is an instrument. It should be in writing because you cannot orally inform the company who is going to come and attend your meeting. So proxy is an instrument in writing. It has to be in writing. So this is the first requirement. 
appointing another person whether he is a member or not doesn't matter you can send any person as your proxy to attend the meeting and to vote at the meeting he may or may not be a member to attend and vote at the meeting on behalf of the member who is appointing him so you can appoint someone else in your position and that person will go and vote at the meeting the instrument as well as the person is called proxy so instrument as well as that person is called proxy proxy will be launched with the company at least 48 hours before the meeting so law says that inform us the company in uh, sorry the company says inform us who's going to come and attend the meeting and that information should be given at least 48 hours before the meeting you can give a shorter notice your articles can allow a shorter notice even if you give us let's say 12 hours notice 24 hours notice we are fine with it you cannot ask for a longer period you cannot say no 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 you have to give at least 72 hours notice that is not allowed so 48 hours before the meeting that is allowed proxy may be inspected now there are certain people who want to know who all are attending the meeting how many proxies lost we want to see so people can inspect by giving notice at least three days before the meeting but the actual inspection can start only 24 hours before the meeting and it can continue it can conclude till the end of the meeting actual inspection can start only 24 hours the meeting and it can continue till the end of the meeting a person may hold maximum 50 proxies now let's say that i uh, am holding the proxy of mr x i'm also holding the proxy of mr y i'm also holding the proxy of mr z like this i can hold proxy of 50 persons but there are certain restrictions if you are holding proxy of 50 persons then their share in the capital should be less than 10 percent ma'am we were holding proxy of 20 people and when we added their share in the capital it is exceeding 10 percent then you can hold only 20 proxies so you can hold maximum 50 proxies provided when you add their share in the share capital it does not exceed 10 percent but what if we are holding proxy of just one person and his share in the company is more than 10 percent then you cannot hold the proxy of any other person so let's say we are holding the proxy of mr a and his share in the company is let's say uh, 12 percent then we can hold his proxy even though it is exceeding 10 percent but we will not hold proxy of any other person suppose the member and proxy they both attend the meeting it is possible no we both attend the meeting then members vote will be counted member will be allowed to vote proxy will be automatically revoked okay Pro proxy will be automatically revoked proxy appointed later in time shall prevail now let's say that i appointed you as a proxy but then you told me that no ma'am i'm very busy i can't attend then i appointed someone else as my proxy and i submitted his form also but both attended the meeting then the one who was appointed later in time will prevail but even in that case you should ensure that it reaches at least three days before the meeting uh, sorry it reaches at least 48 hours before the meeting so th that criteria should also be considered that your proxy should be lodged at least 48 hours before the meeting the one which is appointed later in time will prevail so these are the conditions for proxy in case a question is asked you have to write all this in your answer then one very interesting concept of quorum quorum section 103 it refers to the minimum number of members required to be present to constitute a valid meeting let's say for example i have 3000 members in my company and only two attend the meeting they vote for all the 3000 members Sorry, they take decision for all the 3000 members. How can we allow only two persons to take decision for the majority? So law allows, law requires minimum number of members to be present in the meeting for a valid meeting, for conducting a valid meeting. And that minimum number which has to be present in person is known as quorum. So quorum refers to the minimum number of members required to be present to constitute a valid meeting. If this minimum number is not present, then meeting will be adjourned. It will be postponed. What if in the adjourned meeting also quorum is not present? Then adjourned meeting cannot be further adjourned. The number of members who are present in the adjourned meeting will be considered as quorum and the meeting will be conducted. Resolutions will be passed. Resolutions are also valid. Quorum must be present throughout the meeting. It should not be, I have mentioned it over here, it must be present throughout the meeting. It should not be that quorum was present when the meeting started, then everybody left and only two members or maybe a single member was taking decision and passing resolutions. That is not possible.
quorum must be present now quorum refers to the minimum number of men, uh, members mentioned in the act or articles whichever is higher we want that maximum people should be present in the meeting and they should take decisions for the company we want maximum of them to participate so it is the number mentioned in the act or articles whichever is higher if you are a public company then in case of public company if members are thousand or less then five members should be personally present to to constitute quorum the number is not very high if uh, there are thousand up to five thousand then 15 members to be personally present if there are more than five thousand then 30 members to be personally present now because there is uh, electronic voting option available so the quorum for personal present that is not very high so it is possible for 5 15 and 30 people to be present considering the number of members if you are a private company then men the number mentioned in the articles or two members personally present whichever is higher all right if the agm is called on the requisition of tribunal so if the tribunal has called for the agm why because the company was not calling an agm so the tribunal has ordered for calling the agm then even one member personally present is quorum so in this case the quorum is not relevant even if one member is present that is quorum that person may be present either in person or proxy all right in case of extraordinary general meeting called on the requisition that is request of members absence of quorum will dissolve the meeting this we had studied earlier also you call the meeting and you don't come to attend the meeting if it is a meeting called on the requisition request of members and the quorum is not present it will be dissolved we will not adjourn it but what if the board of directors have called an egm and the quorum is not present then it will be adjourned okay, so board has called either on its own or request of members uh, sorry if the board is calling on its own and the members are not present then in that case it will be adjourned but if the board is calling the meeting on the request of members and the members are not coming then the meeting will be dissolved quorum must be personally present a person representing two members shall be counted twice for quorum so let's say for example that there is a mr x he is attending the meeting on behalf of company a as well as company b now company is an artificial person company cannot attend the meeting company cannot vote at the meeting so they send representatives now company a has represented mr x to attend the meeting and company b has also sent mr x to attend the meeting now x is attending the meeting once on behalf of a another on behalf of company b he shall be counted twice in quorum one for company a and other for company b in case the number of members falls below quorum then all the members must be personally present to constitute quorum let's say for example that the quorum of my company as for the articles was 12 members personally present now members left and i have in my company only eight members left okay i have a company in which there are only eight members remaining now so law says that when all these eight members are personally present see it is below quorum we agree but if all are personally present then it is considered as valid quorum then you'll have to alter the articles to change the number of quorum but then suddenly if the number reduces so then in that case when all are personally present that will be considered as quorum so students these were the provisions relating to quorum now what kind of questions can be asked uh, there is one question which i remember that when is quorum immaterial when is quorum not required so you can say quorum is not required when the tribunal okay has uh, called for the agm but what the institute is expecting that when the number falls below quorum then it is irrelevant all the members personally present will constitute quorum all right so there are many questions for more questions you can refer the ca interlock compiler i'm leaving a link in the description box it has all the past exam questions study material rtp mtp questions arranged unit wise so do go and check out the law compiler i'm sure it will help you a lot because you will know what to write in the answer how to write how to start the answer what is the content expected by ICI, and all the questions are arranged unit wise so students with this i think we also complete yes we have completed the chapter on uh, uh, what should i say yes management and administration next let us discuss declaration and payment of dividend